Welcome to part one of the Rose of the Magnificent tutorial. We're going to split it up into a couple of parts so that hopefully if I make a mistake, I don't have to start recording all over from the beginning. Uh, sorry it's taken me so long to get around to this, and I hope that you find it helpful and that you're able to now bring Rosie and James to your events and your shows, concerts, living rooms, wherever you feel like playing the song and telling the story. Uh, let's start from the beginning. The song was written. Uh, with two capos, actually a full capo on the 5th fret and a partial capo on the 7th fret. A partial capo covers three strings, the 5th string, the 4th string, and the 3rd string. And it leaves the 1st string, the 2nd string, and the 6th string uncovered. So those three strings are actually stopped at the 5th fret while the middle three strings are stopped, excuse me, at the seventh fret. If you play it, if you just strum it open, it should sound like this. Now, if you don't have a partial capo, um, first, definitely think about checking one out and getting one maybe at wherever you get uh, your local guitar accoutrements. Uh, it makes guitar playing really fun. You can do all sorts of cool chord voicings and suspensions and add thirteenths and, and all sorts of really fun stuff. If you don't have one, uh, you can take your full capo and put it on the seventh fret and just play from here. Uh, you're gonna lose a lot of the space in the, the fancy chord voicings. You're just gonna have to play the roots. So for example, I say um, you're gonna play uh, you know D major seven over F sharp. You're just gonna play D over F sharp, or if I say you're going to play, uh, you know, a G5 add 9, you're probably just going to play G. Uh, so you're going to lose a lot of that space and substance of the chords, uh, but you'll, you'll get the basic gist of it. Uh, so up to you. If you're not learning this on guitar, um, keep in mind, I'm going to say all these chords um, in capo key. So for example, this is a D shape. So I'm going to call this chord a D. Um, in reality, concert key, because of where our capo is on 7, this is going to be an A chord. So I'll put those chords up here. So if you're learning on an instrument that is not the guitar that doesn't use capos, you're going to follow these chords up here in the corner. I hope, right now I'm just pointing in space. I hope something is there. Um, if you're learning on guitar um, and concert keys confuse you, then follow my, my voice and what I'm saying. So this would be D, G, and A instead of A, D, E. Um, so that's up to you. Follow whatever instrument and, and chord notation is going to help you feel most comfortable. All right, so we're playing D shapes on capo 7. That puts us in the key of A. We're going to start with a D5 chord. That's where there's no third. The five means there's no third in the chord, so you're going to have either a major chord or a minor chord. But we don't know. It's just... Okay, so what that means is basically you're going to play a D shape, and you're going to take off the middle finger. So that's our chord. D5. We're going to move into... Now, I may have gotten this wrong. I may have gotten all of these wrong. A D major 7 over F sharp, which we're going to play like this, which is going to have our thumb playing the F sharp, our pinky on the fifth string, one, two, three, four frets from our capo. All of my from our capo delineations are going to be from our partial, our furthest up capo. Okay, so this is this would be zero right here. Our seventh fret is going to be zero. We will get actually down to zero um, in one point, so don't worry about that. But one is going to be the eighth fret, two is going to be the ninth fret, three is going to be the tenth fret, and so on and so forth. So, thumb. On the 2nd fret, 6th string, pinky, 1, 2, 3, 4th fret, 5th string, open, then our, our pointer finger hasn't left, it's still here from the D, on the 3rd string, 2nd fret, 
We took off our ring finger from the second string, so those are actually gonna be the same note. And then E, well, the E string is open as well. So you're gonna get this. So from here, take off our thumb, we're going to take off our pinky, we're going to add our middle finger on the sixth string on the third fret. How's that? Let's practice. And we're going to add our ring finger back on to the second string also third fret. So our final position is gonna look like this. coming but we're not there yet let's talk about right hand for a second the right hand pattern for the intro is going to be a uh what do you call it the pluck on the low string the on the sixth string and then a strum all the way down so it'll sound like this it's a good practice now there's some up and downs in the middle so we'll take it slow, but you're gonna sound like this. So what I've done is I have no idea if they did or not. All right. There's a little lick that's happening here at the end of this part, so. So we were here. We're gonna go into what is a D over F sharp. But you're just gonna basically move from your middle finger to your thumb down to the, on the same on the sixth string, you're gonna walk from the third fret to the second fret, right? Then you go back up. And then you're gonna play in A7 sus4, okay? So an A7 sus4 is gonna look like this. This string's gonna be open, this string's gonna be open. You're gonna play the fourth string on the second fret. Third string's gonna be open. You're gonna put your ring finger here on the second string on the third fret. And again, the, the top string, the number one string is also gonna be open. So that pattern is gonna sound like this. Uh, we were here. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so you're strumming, we'll just be going like that. I'm gonna do it slow, twice, and then put it in time for you to practice along.
All right, let's move on to the verse. Uh, the verse is the part, right? Rosie goes to Foster Station every Friday in the afternoon. Um, all that part. All, all the part. All that part is going to be uh, what we call the verse. Um, and we're going to hold off on... We're going to call that the pre-chorus. Um, so the verse has a similar pattern. Uh, but there's a, a strumming lick that's that's might cause us some difficulty that will take really slow. So we're going to start with a D chord, right? Our D5 that we started on with no third in the chord. Do, 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 do. That's a D7 major 7 chord. And what we've done basically is gone like this. 6th string open, 5th string open, 4th string open, 3rd string, 2nd fret, 2nd string, 2nd fret. 1st string, 2nd fret. That's a D major 7 shape. So we're going to come from here. And now we're going to a G5. Again, there's no 3rd in this chord. So you have your middle finger on the 6th string, 3rd fret. And your ring finger on the 2nd string, 3rd fret and everything else is open. You're gonna need your pointer finger. Normally, like, people like to play G like this. Don't do that. You're gonna need your pointer finger for the lick. So that should be the sound. Let's practice. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Okay, so we're here. That should be our strumming. And six strum, na, na, na. pluck strum, pluck strum. Cool. I can't wait to listen to this back and hear how goofy I sound. Okay. Let's get to the lick. You're going to take your pointer finger, it's going to do a lot of moving. The lick is done by strumming all of the strings, but for the sake of actually hearing what the notes are on the lick, we're going to pluck those strings individually. So, pointer finger, these fingers are going to stay where they are. Pointer finger, fourth string, second fret. So you should get this. The lick is this. Sorry. You can take it off. string. Take off your middle finger and play this. So that pattern should look like this. You're going to go back to that low note and walk it down. And now all your fingers are off except for this one. Here's where it gets interesting. So because we're using the partial capo on seven, this is still a note. We're playing it basically um, on the zero fret. If you're using a full capo on the seventh fret, you would just play it open, but because if we play the sixth string open, it's gonna sound down here and we want it to sound up here, we're gonna put our finger behind the partial capo in the same fret as the capo on the seventh fret, and then we're gonna play it open which is gonna take us to our bass note, which is down here. So that lick, a little bit slower than full speed, should be like this. One more time. Instead of plucking those notes individually like we did, we're going to strum up and down while the left hand does the lick. So it should sound like this.
doesn't matter. I notice sometimes I'm going like this down right after the lick. If I use my pointer there or my thumb, it's just a matter of comfort as long as you're getting that note, right? Six string, second fret. So. In speed, it would sound like this. Rosie goes to Foster Station. some words. Let's do the first verse, yeah? Rosie goes to Foster Station every Friday in the afternoon. One milk, two sugars down at Samson's, then old John's newsstand just to see what's new. Coffee. She says, I'm sorry, he said, do I know you? And at that point, we're going to move into the pre-chorus, which you can find in part two of the tutorial. So go back, practice that. Get a half capo if you don't have one. We're going to be using them a lot, partial capos. Uh, sorry if this was confusing. Uh, it's the first time I've ever actually written this down or tried to teach it. Um, so hopefully we'll get more clear as we move forward. So practice and uh, looking forward to hearing you all playing this soon. Bye-bye now.